Uh, so here's the book. Um, it just landed yesterday, so um, I'll put the link in the description just of um, a company used and all that information. But yeah, first off, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, again, it's the first book I've ever done, so I wanted to go for like a just like a, a normal book type finish rather than like a photo book or a photo album. Um, the only things that would change would be like the the paper type, like it is fantastic quality, but it's maybe too heavy. So it was 190 GSM. So I would, if I was, well, I will be doing more hopefully, but I would change the the weight of the paper just maybe to a slightly lighter paper. But um, yeah, for the first one, like I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, so we'll have a look through the book. Um, have a look through a few of the edits as well of the images um, and the type of style I was going for and yeah we'll just, just dive right in so again the finish it, like everything's perfect even making putting the images and book together it, it, it was fine I mean uh, you just had like a PDF with guides on it um, do single page double page spreads you know your covers and all that so it was it was easy once you've done a few pages you know what you just flew through it really so um, uh, let me have a look here. Even the darks rendered very well. Um, you know, there's no issues at all. Uh, again, these are first couple of images of um, the first night in uh, Capuchigo. Just showing you the, the crazy, hectic scenes of the streets there. Um, but yeah, that was using the, the 50, uh, 50 mil 1.2 G Master lens. Uh, yeah, I'm still glad I brought it. You definitely need it for those low light situations, but um, 2.8 would have, would have done as well. Um, so yeah, the color, I tried to go for um, like a, a dark green in the shadows uh, with reds and oranges, just like a bit of a, an 80s um, sort of cinematic moody, movie vibe. So um, yeah, like this one, this is one of my favorite images. Um, again, it was just the color, the lighting, um, the subject, the focus on it is just it's very um, atmospheric and again it was just in through like the cafe and um, it was just with the, the reflection of the neon lights as well and it was just yeah it was just perfect I mean um, the lady was actually in with another um, man but again I don't know if it was a work colleague partners friends you know it's just one of those images where you sort of think what's the story what's going on there but um, yeah, there was so much going on down these streets um, and I just tried to keep the edit consistent on these ones. Um, again, there's my wee mate that um, the roundhouse kicked me in the head uh, for taking his photograph, but um, he came out really well, so he did. <laughs> uh, I know the colours, and I'm, I'm, or it's rendered perfectly, um, as exactly as the edit was. Um, again, sometimes when you're setting things to print, you know, you're a bit worried of the colours, or is it going to be accurate or not, but this is literally 99 if not 100% accurate to the to the edits, thankfully. Um, again, just a few other streets again, oranges, greens in the shadows, and um, just uh, yellows as well. Um, obviously it depends on the scene as well, you know, what colours you have available. You can manipulate them, you know, to a certain point, but you don't want to go too far. Um, again, those are fine. Um, again, I like this image. Um, it came out very clean and crisp. Um, just showing the worker obviously in their their style and the flower market and, and whatnot. But yeah, it came out very very sharp. Um, no issues there at all. Let's see about these ones. And again, into the dark sort of green shadows. You have the yellows there as well. Um, just trying to keep it consistent as well. Um, and these, I think this is another image, um, it's one of my favourites, I don't necessarily know why, but um, but just as a type of 80s look to it, um, I think it's more the, the red and the yellow crates, again the green and the shadows and just just the vibe it had, um, just as store guys, um, you know, loading up the van or whatever they were doing, but um, yeah, I really like the way that turned out. Um, a couple of Okay, cycling motorcycles. Um, again, 7-Eleven, you've got the, the reds, orange, yellows, greens. Um, just made them more prominent. Again, I'll go through a few edits as well on the screen just to see how we, we got there. 
um, on each edit. That turned out well actually, it was more of a sort of abstract shot, uh, but just the colours and atmosphere, I think it turned out well. Uh, I was happy enough with that. Um, again, these guys, um, again, people just sitting in the street drinking away, just having having the time of their lives, and there was no fighting, there was no intimidation around. It was it's just a really good vibe about the place. Um, again, I think it was more yet yeah, these shots. Again, you've got your yellows, greens, and sort of an 80s vibe scene with the the old type taxi there. Again, I'm not even sure what make of model of car that is but um, they are very very cool compared to the taxis we have over here but yeah I just thought it just lent itself well to that type of edit again you could have went changed it to blues and, and reds and, and made it more vibrant but again it just depends what what overall um, vibe you're going for um, another one of the images I liked um, again it's quite simple but it just shows you know it's one of those shots you can see um, you know, are the friends, sisters, partners, and you just see the um, the cross, and then obviously just the the lights of the city. But yeah, it came out really well. I was very pleased with that one. And uh, your taxi shots, of course. Um, yeah, these ones as well. That one is not the most sharp image, but I do really like it. It just captures the sort of atmosphere of the um, small alleyways. There's more restaurants and, and bars and stuff. Um, Again, we'll have a look at the edit on that one because uh, there was a lot going on. It was actually quite underexposed, the image. Um, and I've done a bit of work, obviously, to, to bring everything back. But um, yeah, I was happy enough where that, that came out. It was very busy down that alleyway as well, as you can maybe see there. So the fact that I managed to get one person on his own on there as well, it was um, I was quite lucky. But uh, yeah, it was manic down that, down that little alley. Um, there's so much to capture, but um, again, you do want to be too intrusive at the same time. And um, this is another one down the alley. Again, this was very sort of 80s. If anyone's ever seen the movie Black Rain uh, with Michael Douglas, it's sort of along those vibes. It's like dark, moody. You've got the greens, orange, reds. You know, a bit of smoke in there as well. So yeah, I was I was happy with that. Um, again, a few more guys out socialising. Skip on here. Again, S is going into Shibuya. Um, that image there, um, it was again not the sharpest image, but it came out really well. I was really happy with it. Um, it just looks nice and soft. Um, the skin tones are fine. Again, went for the, the green and the shadows. Um, and same with this little guy here waiting on the train. Um, again, you can see the green, the yellow, the bit of orange as well. Um, I was trying to keep it consistent even during the, the day, um, which is harder to do because you don't want it looking too unnatural at the same time. Um, this image I, I really like. Um, I'm not even 100% sure why. It's maybe just the, the oranges coming through in the signage. It just looks very um, futuristic to me or something. I don't know, but this guy wandered into the scene and just the construction guard there as well. Um, yeah, I was very happy with that. It was 30 odd degrees that day um, in the city and I just didn't have any energy left. So done a quick walk through sort of the, the busy city and then I ventured out into the sort of suburbs and the quieter area. And um, again, it's the construction guard. I don't know exactly what he's guarding, but probably more to keep people out of it, imagine. Again, going into the, the suburbs, the quieter areas of Shibuya. Um, just again, capturing what, what's about. There's the post office or post worker um, and the vans and stuff. I just thought it was nice, you know, just it was a contrast between, you know, the busy, crazy shops and, and city um, and then more of the suburbs, the quiet areas. Um, and again, with this shot, it must be, well, I think it's a, a mother and daughter maybe taking her to school or, or something like that. But um, again, it just, just caught my eye and just, again, I was lucky enough I, I got the shot. Um, these ones, um, I thought it was a nice area, just with the shadows uh, creating those shapes and lines. And I just stood there uh, just for five or ten minutes, just waiting on the crowds going by and just picking out individual subjects. Again, trying to find the, the old umbrella shots. Um, but yeah, I think they turned out quite well, um, even with the, the colour in black and white. Um, and again, we're into the, the little 
park area, uh, which was nice and quiet and relaxing. Um, again, just trying to catch your breath from the city and, and the heat, and it was it was crazy. But yeah, there was a lot going on. I mean, there's you know father and son out looking at the the pond or the small lake. Um, again, the the two well, I would assume they're sisters. Um, they were looking. There was a little uh, turtle or tortoise in the in the pond or lake, and they were they were looking at it, um, and then walking back in sort of towards the the city again. Again, it's looking at all the fashion as well. Um, everyone sort of there's a different style, um, and you can see all shapes and sizes and colours um, of people, you know. Um, and it's just trying to capture as much as you can without being again intrusive or annoying um, again just trying to capture the movement and the you know the the busyness of the the actual city and the crossings uh, yeah again another just again it was very very hot that day um, I actually got the train back to the hotel sort of just after midday because it was it was far too hot um, again this guy um, with a unique haircut um, and the style and just with the red you know matching the the bag and the sign uh, what else do we have? And the black and white. I tried to incorporate black and white work hood. Um, I think that turned out okay. This one, this was in the train station. Um, a lot of LCD lights um, or, or panels, and the, the, that was advertising boards more than anything. But um, I just got it lucky where it changed all to one color, and this guy was just sort of mesmerized by. I don't know all the colours or, or, or the captions, but um, yeah, it was very busy. So again, it was just lucky just cap capturing him on his own rather than a crowd of people around him. So, and then this was back in the Shibuya at night time where it was a lot cooler, thankfully. Um, again, because it was the scramble crossing, it's a, it was the busiest crossing in the world, apparently. So um, trying to isolate a subject is quite difficult, but again, it's just a matter of patience, waiting for somebody just to step out um, before everybody else so managed to get that shot um, and again you might be able to see this too well but um, sort of guy standing there he's you know looking up at the the guy on the billboard there just thought it was a a good angle um, and a few cosplay guys knocking about as well uh, and the trains again this is down another alley and super it was very very dark uh, but I just thought the colors and the signage was very sort of Blade Runner-esque again no rain unfortunately but um, yeah everything else was was perfect you know there's busy street it was small amount of light but again that's where the you know the the wider apertures come in um, it's more of a abstract shot just of, of one of the not even sure if it's just into a loading bay or what it is but I just thought the colors were interest in the patterns um, again this shot uh, this young fella just run away from his from his dad just laughing and, and him trying to catch him it was um, a good sign just again that's where the, the train would have come across as well and then it's back to the train station on the way back to um, Shinzuku again going along the green yellow red theme and um, just trying to keep it consistent and within the interior of the the trains as well um it was hard trying to nail focus on those as well at times there was a lot of images that didn't quite hit the mark but um i was lucky enough for those two um on the same of these just tried to isolate this you know a few subjects within the train um and they're not too bad um it could have been better but it turned out okay i suppose um and then back into shinzuku uh, there's a few just the shots of the streets and the skyline. Again, if anyone's played um, Tokyo Ghostwire, you know, you know that reference just of the, the telephone boxes. Um, and yes, another image that I like. Um, it was quite 80s as well, just in the setup, and then I was lucky a guy just, just came out of the shadows um, and just caught it. But I was trying, I was worried about the edit on that one actually because I thought I'd overdone it, overdone it with the, the green and the shadows, but the prints actually came out better than expected, so um, yeah, I'm happy enough for that one. Again, this guy, um, it was weird, I think it was a car park or something, but um, 
I was sort of wondering just to have a look, see what was going on, and then I seen this guy, he must have spotted me, and I got up off the chair to come out, so I just quickly snapped the image and, and turned around before he came out, but yeah, just like the, the shadow detail, um, and just the light, and, and just obviously him standing up, it just, yeah, it was interesting. Um, this image here is probably one of my favourites of the whole trip. Um, again, I'm not 100% sure why, but it's just the colours for a start, so you've got the green, you've got the, the orange, the yellow, um, and just the, the atmosphere in the shot. Again, I don't know whether she's in a rush, she's panicked, she's, you know, scared. I don't know what, what the expression is in the face, but I just managed to capture it. Um, and again, similar to this one, it was just a guy who caught, you know, in between the crowd, caught his, uh, caught his eye, or he's probably looking at me saying, what, what is he doing? But um, yeah, it just turned out really well, just within the, the hustle and bustle of the hectic crowd and just sort of picking him out. So yeah, I was happy with that. Um, and again, just a few, you know, standard shots just of the, the crowds and the, the different people walking about. Um, again, caught this guy, just, he must be obviously the chef um, working in the back, but um, yeah, this is the shrine just uh, off the one of the parks. And again, one of the signs that said, you know, no loitering or no drinking. And of course, there's people loitering or drinking all around the place, but again, there's no, no litter, no no hassle, they were just enjoying, enjoying themselves. Um, and it was, it was a nice relaxing park to walk through. Again, that was on the, on the way back. Um, again, there's no, no fear of, of being, you know, intimidated or, or in, that you're in danger or anything. It was just really relaxed the whole, the whole time. Um, and then Golden Guy, uh, where all the, the wee small bars are. Uh, this is where my uh, action camera decided to do its own thing. Um, but yeah, it was very dark, very, very compact. Um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time around here. Um, but again, there's plenty of like wee different theme bars. Uh, this one was um, like a horror theme bar. Um, uh, I didn't go in Danny actually, um, because if I would have went in and sat down, that would have been me for the night, no more images. So. And this was in the third night um, down to a different district. I've seen, I've seen images previously of, of you know the big billboard or um, neon signs, so definitely wanted to go down there. Again, my wee traffic conductor mate, car park attendant, he, he stood with me when I was taking my images. Um, and again, trying to go for, instead of like a vibrant red uh, neon, I just tried to go for like, a, like an orangey, uh, yellow, more on the side of yellow on the reds, you know, just for to try to mix it up a little bit. Uh, just again, I thought more more of a retro vibe. Um, and again, the same of these. Again, you've got your green shadows. Um, they're a little bit more red on that than the previous images, and then dropped a bit of green into the black and white, uh, just to give it a bit something, bit of something extra, I suppose. But um, yeah, these shots were just sort of off the cuff shots, but I actually really like that the way it came out. Um, it just shows you like the, the busy city and the workers and, and just, just all the small details uh, within the street. But uh, you see, there's sort of more of those images. I'm a wee mate again. He's probably again wondering what I was doing, stamping his item, just taking images. Um, yeah, I like this image as well. Um, the guy just, I think he was sitting, relaxing or, or thinking about life, I don't know. but. Um, yeah, we just just happened to to find him sitting in front of the, the car there. It was just a, a nice image. This was before I realised I lost my phone, so I was still quite relaxed at this point. Um, so yeah, I like this is one of my favourite ones as well. Um, again, it's more to do with the, the colours, um, you know, what they call salary men or you know just businessmen, I suppose. Um, I was always on on the checklist whenever I was going over to Tokyo, just the, of images I wanted to capture. Um, so again, yellows, greens, just a little bit of light blue as well there, um, and the green in the shadows. I just think it was, it's subtle enough, but obviously it, 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 you know it's it's been edited, if you know what I mean. Um, let's see, again, around this stage, this is where um, I stuck to the one focal length of 50 mil on the 2.8. Sigma, um, just again to compare and contrast between the, the G Master uh, 1.2 at 50 mil, um, and again, there's there's not much of any difference I can tell between them to be honest. I have to actually look at the metadata 
to see which was used on the Sigma and which was the, the Sony G Master, but um, uh, yeah, these are images as well. I tried to add a bit of grain um, to that black and white, but you can't really notice it. It was, I know it was quite subtle on the screen, but it, it hasn't came across, I don't think, uh, which is interesting. Um, again, 50mm shots I cheated for this one. This was 70mm uh, because it just like the, the light of the neon billboard just reflecting off the, the guy's face and then there's the, the light of the, the street lamp in the background. Uh, and yeah, that's just on the way back. Um, again, coming back in the uh, it has got this, this guy on the, on the motorbike, motorcycle. Again, I, I just thought I caught it really quick because obviously he was going past me, but um, the lights reflecting in his helmet uh, was very striking. And then obviously the, the ladies in the background. Um, and then just like a, an associated image with him just showing his, his friend or, or whatever, just, you know, the motorcycle, which was very cool. And last few images, again, um, that one was a good edit to do as well, uh, because it was during the day, um, just trying to sort of tweak the colours to match the nighttime images, but not going too far with it. Um, and again, it turned out fine. Um, and the last two, again, just some shots around outside the hotel area. Um, so again, just of the, the neon lights in the street. And again, just from a different angle. So yeah, all in all, very happy with it. Um, again, I'll, I'll put information on the description if anybody wants to email, um, if they want, want to purchase a copy or want any more information on it. Um, and again, we'll have a look at some of the images on the screen. Okay, so we'll jump straight into Lightroom here um, and we'll have a look at uh, some of the images um, and the edit that I went for on them. Uh, so we'll jump into this one first. Again, with all editing, there's no right way or wrong way, it's just whatever way you know you want the image, the final image to look like. Um, for my edits, again, I just wanted to go for something a bit more retro, a bit 80s and, and um, use like green in the shadows, um, put a bit of a fade on the images, a bit of green, um, and go that way. So again, no right way or wrong way, but um, I'll just run through a few of the images um, and, and how we got to the end result. So uh, to start off with, I would usually go down to uh, remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. Also hit the level uh, because I cannot hold the camera straight to save my life. Um, exposure seems fine on this. Um, I mean we can tweak it anyway but um, I would then go down to our color wheel and straight away jump into these shadows. I will bring it up into a green. Um, Again, it may look a bit crazy at the moment, but we can dial it back or, you know, so we'll leave it about there. Um, we can bring it down a little bit. Midtones, go a little sort of greenish, yellowish, possibly. Um, we can take it down a little bit because it is quite a well exposed image. Highlights, uh, sometimes I go for orange but I'm not too sure in this one um, I might just leave it about there so there's a small tint to it again you can just have a look and see what you you know were what you've um, what you've done again that's not too bad of a, a base a starting point um, and then we can go up to our HSL and just play around with the, the color the hue saturation and luminance again that makes, makes such a difference to your images before you even touch the initial um, options on your control panel. Um, so reds, hue, um, I don't want to make them too light and such. Um, I think that would do. Um, again, most of this is done for me anyway by eye. Um, just whatever you think you know looks best for the type of finish you're going for. Green on it, just in the boxes a little bit. Aqua, a little bit in the pipe. Blue, so the type of blue down to there. Not much going on. The purple, magenta, usually a fell effect. The red. Yeah, bring it down a little bit 
fire, cap, saturation, and I'll just add a bit more into the red. Just sort of the fine details again, um, and this guy's hot. This seems to be affecting, so uh, I'll go back there, it seems grand. Gentle again, it's going to affect the red, it's not a big effect on it, we'll just leave it there. So, luminance, this has a, a large effect on the image. Uh, so, yeah, bring the reds down. You see, if you bring it down, it looks a bit false. Um, so leave it a bit there. Green, bring it down. Aqua, bring it down a little. Yeah, and bring the blues down. Purple. Okay, the will actually increase. Um, so again, we'll just check what we've done. Um, again, subtle enough. Um, it's more the reds uh, and the yellows. Then I would go up to um, tone curve. Um, I would just stick a bit of a fade on it. Just lift those shadows in the backs. Bring them in a little bit here. Again, you can go as crazy as you want, but it's just trying to make it a little, you know subtle enough. Um, and then we'll go into the colors. Okay, and this is where we'll have a, an impact. I find with this, a little goes a long way with these um, tweaks. So it's just very subtle changes. Uh, and again, you can go back and fine tune them whatever way you want. See, that's a bit crazy there. And every time you do an edit, unless you see it as a preset, um, you know, every edit's different. You'll never nail it 100%. Um, so I've probably done this three or four times, um, and it, it's looked different <laughs> every time, but it's similar to the finished product or, or finished image you want, so yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, I'm going in more of the blues that are. Again, we'll just have a look. So yeah, that's made a, a drastic difference. I mean, I like to go out um, about six just to get an overall view of the image. Um, you know, if I feel it's going too far one way, I can then pull it back. So it's not too bad. I don't say we're there yet. And again, that's not. We haven't even touched any of those initial sliders um, at all. And if you look at the before and after, um, again, it's a dramatic change without touching any of those. Um, so that's, to me, that's mainly where where the edit comes in. The other bits, you know, you can mask off areas and um, increase the contrast and shadows or clarity, but um, to me, most of that it's done using the color wheel and the HSL slider, and of course, then the, the color curves. Um, so, So yeah, that's a good representation there, so it looks it looks a lot better to me anyway. Um, um, again, D he is that's you can go crazy with that too, but um, you know make it more sort of lighter or darker, more intense looking. I'll increase it a little bit, but um, clarity of ten not to add a lot. Because it, it's uh, it look very garish very quick. Um, or again, the other way, it's just not not suited to the scene. I don't think so. A little bit of clarity, texture, same again. Just depends on your taste. What what you like. Um, 
I don't really need to do anything there, I don't think. Um, what I will do is just go back down to our shadows and again just tweak the colour and see what looks best. And that's not too bad there actually. It's um, a bit of warmth in the shadows. I might even go there. Um, the tones. And that seems it. So again, it's just fine tuning it once you've got that base. Um, and then I don't think I've done it on the final one, but the masking, um, what I would usually do is just grab a radial gradient and we'll just sort of mask off the two guys here uh, and then actually invert it and just reduce the exposure a bit so it just draws your eye into the guys um, in the back there. So, uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, like you could go down and add. Uh, a bit of grain to the image. I would usually go about between 25 to 50 um, and again same for the size amount. Um, you'll have to zoom in we'll go about 25% just to see the actual effects on it. Um, and again you can see it there it's quite grainy you know that film look um, and again we can just have a look of the overall effect so it's before and after before and after also the size and the grain it affects the clarity of the image so like if you go to that's at 46 if you increase the size of that to what well, there's 75 you can see the clock it's affected the clarity of the image a lot you know so you don't really well nine times out of ten i don't think you would want that but um again personal preference so i think i'll just leave the grain off um there we go and then have a look at the overall image again. And we'll go before and after. So there, like again, didn't take that long. You can spend as long as you want on edits. Sometimes the more you, you look at an image, you, you become blind. To me, you'd have to walk away and come back again and just, you know, get a fresh set eyes on it if you like. Um, but yeah, that again, that probably looks different to the, the final image you went for, but it's not too far off. Um, and that's the type of the, you know, the retro vibe was looking. So we're going to the next image. Um, and again, the exact same process. Um, I would start off profile corrections and then level. There we go, it's not too bad out of time actually. Drop down a little bit and go straight into shadows. Too far. Um, that's not too bad. Again, it can look a bit harsh initially, but um, you can dial it back and change it. The tones again and go for a bit of a yellow tinge, I think. Yeah. Highlights, I'm not sure on this one. Um, there's not a lot going on there. A wee bit just a wee bit warm on the shadow or the highlights I'll take it back a little bit um, and just drop the shadow down a bit so again that's not too bad of a, a base um, and we'll go up the HSL again you can again you can do this whatever way you want you can start hue or saturation whatever I just go from from left to right really um, again red you just have to be careful of actually increase the magnification get a better look at the, the effect so again you don't want to go too crazy um, so green I'm gonna take the green down it more affects the, the straps and the handbag there um, and then the blues I like that blue there I don't really want to change too much on that um, aqua, there's never a lot of aqua in an image unless you're taking seascapes or something I find but um, Yep, so there's the blue there I want. That's not too bad there actually. Um, purple, yeah, there's a little bit in the, the blues up there. Magenta, again, it's going to affect the reds. It's not too bad. I don't want to mess about with it too much. Saturation, again, you know, it's the edge of the, the highlights there. It's just, it looks a bit too crazy to me, so I'll just. Increase it a slight bit. Um, 
orange. I'll, I'll increase it a little bit just to keep a bit of warmth in the hair. Um, yellow, I think. Hmm. I think I'll increase it, but I will change it in the color cards, I think. Um, green, again, there's not a lot. Aqua, again, not a lot. Blues. I think I'll just leave it as it is. And then the purple and the blue and the highlights, again. You don't want to go too crazy, I think I'll just leave it as it is. Same with the magenta. And again, I mean, as I find this makes the most difference in the image. Um, see, again, you just need to watch just the, that outer ring there. Um, I'm not even going to change that. So orange, yep, yeah, we'll lift that up. Um, and the yellow as well. You can get a lot of difference. Uh, green. I think I'll drop it down actually. Increase that. Blue. Again, we'll keep it quite light just so this pops out. Yeah. Purple again, we'll not touch that. Or the magenta. So again, we'll have a look. So the before and after. So that's good. I am also the before and after just of the total edit. Um, again, we're, we're heading across to that sort of Again, retro, green, yellow, red vibe. Um, go. And then again, up to the tone curve, we'll just do the global one first. Again, stick a bit of a fade on, and bring the blacks up, so that's not too bad there. Again, just subtle touches because um, it could go crazy very quick um, or change the, the, the tone of the image entirely. Um, okay. Again, people may find them want to lean more towards the blue side, but again, it just depends what what effect you're after. I could just add a bit of a fade in, I suppose. Um, and again, we shall have a look before and after. There we go. Um, so we have, I still don't think we're, we're there yet. Um, again, you can take as long or as quick as you like with these edits, but um, Try not to spend too long on them because they could just end up changing the whole the whole image entirely. to keep it nice and soft. Um, I'll go and have a look at the green. Again, through the default, I would keep it at around 40 to 50. Size 25. Um, again, depending on the scene. That doesn't seem too bad. Again, 
up to 25 and have a look so there's a good bit of green added there but i think it definitely adds to the image um, but well i think i'll actually bring the shadows down a bit more And again you can crop some people crop first again there's not much of a crop of a put on that um here we go so there's the start and there's the end um again it probably looks different to what it did the last time but it's still still in the same vicinity but um and yeah not a whole lot more to it um this one's a good one it was quite underexposed um so we'll have to fix it as well. So again, I will jump in. Usual, make sure it's level. Okay. Um, so we'll probably increase exposure a tad. Um, just keep an eye on the highlights as well. There we go. So again, we'll probably change it um, as we go, but it's not too bad to start off with. Again, into the shadows. That's not bad there. Um, again, you can make the shadows lighter, darker because it's sort of underexposed anyway. I don't want to bring it down any further. Um, hmm. Let me start there. Highlights. I want to keep them quite orange, you know, with uh, the lanterns. So go there and on my tick. HSL again. So yeah, that's I don't want the reds, I want it more on the orange side, so that that's made a good difference straight away. Uh, but I don't want it too orange if you know what I mean, so there. Greens, there's not a lot of green. Again, the aqua blue bit just in the sign up there again it's just looking out for the small details as well so it doesn't look super obvious just change that there. saturation Again, there's not a whole lot going on. Purple, magenta again, just looking at the reds. It's not too bad. Three months again. So yeah, we'll lift those lanterns up a bit. Again, this can help with the underexposure as well. Um, depending on what way you take it. Okay, just have a quick look there. 
Yep, so that's made a good bit of a difference. Um, okay, so what we'll do, we'll actually go to masking this time. Um, and the mask tube is actually really, really good within Lightroom. Um, they have updated it with more of the AI features, I um, suppose. So hopefully it will detect our subject here. Um, let me see if it will detect this guy. Yep, there we go. So it's masked them perfectly well. Um, again, what you can do is go in and just add or separate the masks. So again, you can have one for the entire person, facial skin, body skin, eyebrows, eye, hair and clothes. So um, for the purpose of this, we'll maybe split it up. So we'll go body skin, facial skin um, and clothing. So there's three masks, create masks. There we go. So, uh, right, we can jump on close and we can increase that, increase the whites. Okay, you don't want to go too far with it. Um, I don't really like messing with the shadows in this because it can look really false really quick. Um, so, we'll leave it as it is. Um, exposure a wee bit more. Um, skin. A little bit. Face. Again, just have to be careful in the face as well. Um, just don't make it look too artificial looking. Mm, it's not too bad, I think. Um, and then what we do is add another mask, a gradial again, or a radial gradient, just about there. And I like to invert it and then just drop the exposure down a little bit so it's just bringing your eye again into the subject in the middle um, and there we go again that's quick um, again if you see it as a preset you just throw in a preset on it and making a few tweaks um, again you can add your green we'll go again and we'll see if this works it's so maybe a bit too far in this one um, but again it's very film like um, let me take it down a little bit and yeah, I'm happy enough with that. And we'll go to our before and after. And there you can see the difference. Um, again, that was quite quick and it was underexposed um, just for, so it didn't entirely blow out the highlights, but yeah, like again, there was not much uh, change within your initial control panel. Again, we haven't even touched texture clarity or anything or vibrance, so Again, it's totally up to yourself what way you want to go with it. You can go subtle, you can go crazy, whatever you want. Um, and jump into this one as well. So this, trying to keep within the same theme, you know, of the, the greens, oranges and yellows. Um, but during the day it can be quite difficult because obviously it's completely different. So, um, again, with this, again, we're jumping in exactly the same way. Straighten it up. Um, exposure's fine on this one, so straight into the greens and the shadows. There. Okay. I'll bring it down a wee bit this time because it is quite bright. again so I just I want to keep it quite light this um the red or it was red um on the truck drop it down a little bit keep it yellow up green will bring down yep bring the blue down as well I think Okay, so the magenta doesn't look like it's doing much there, but if you look at the socks, the effect it has on, and also the, the truck. So, let me see. Keep it around here, maybe. Seems fine. And again, going on the saturation, we'll have to keep an eye out for the socks and stuff as well. Um, 
yeah, on the red. And just make it a bit deeper. And the same with the orange. Yellow as well. Green, I think I'll keep quite neutral. So, um, So again, the magenta, I'll keep an eye on the socks. That's not too bad there. Luminance, yeah, I don't want it too bright. I'll bring it actually down. And again, and the skin tones I need to look out for as well. Uh, that's fine. Yellow, we'll keep bright. I think I'll keep the, the blues quite muted on this one. There we go. Again, stick a bit of a fade on. Again, it's not always the, uh, everyone's taste, but I think just for the effect I'm going for it. as well. That seems a bit harsh to me, so you can just change the affected area. Okay, that seems a bit more salt to me. There we go. Um, then you can add vignettes and all the rest of it, but I don't know. Again, it's personal preference. I don't use it a hell of a lot, more so in landscapes, I would say. Um, but not on these type of images. Okay, and we'll stick a bit of green on. There we go. And that's that one done as well. So again, if you'd say go back through that one, that one, that one, and that one, you can definitely see obviously the theme because it's it's similar. You're playing with the same shadows and the colors and. The HSL. Um, so that, that's pretty much it. Um, I've put a few couple of presets there just um, from one of the previous edits I've done. I'll stick a link in again if you just want to have a look and play with it. Um, and yeah, that, that's pretty much it.